We're going to call the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, to order here this morning, and our only agenda item is case number 6326. Um, Mr. Dixon, could you go ahead and introduce the file for us, please? Yes, case 6326, an appeal of the Zoning Administrator's Notice of Violation Involving Chickens in a Residential Neighborhood. The site is located at 6516 Freedom Avenue, Sykesville, Maryland, on property zone R10,000, Residence District in Election District 5. By Steve Jr. and Jessica Jordan, Code of Public Local Laws and Ordinances, Sections 158.133D, a, a site visit is tentatively scheduled for Wednesday, August 18, 2021 at approximately 9.30 a.m. In the file of this matter, we have the following documents. A notice of public hearing, August 2nd, 2021. Site minutes for the case. Hearing notice was posted July 20th, 2021 by Zoning Inspector Scott Robinson. Investigation progress report. indicates there is a rooster on the property causing a nuisance. There are three pages in the investigation progress report. There's also hearing notice was posted August 26, 2021 by Zoning Inspector Scott Robinson. Let's see, the investigation progress report. There's one uh, April 2021, three pages in that investigation progress report. So the first one was what, April 2021 too. Then we have the appeal of a notice of violation from the zoning administrator. Jay Voigt sent a April 7th, 2021 letter, formal notice of violation uh, as a result of, a, of an investigation at the property. We found that your tenant has five chickens and one rooster which are causing a nuisance in the surrounding neighborhood. The raising of chickens is a violation of the Code of Public Local Laws and Ordinances of Carroll County, Chapter 158.074 our 10,000 residence district. This letter will serve as a formal notice of violation. I would ask that the file be entered into evidence. So a motion to enter the file into evidence. <coughs> we'll move. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to enter the file into evidence. All those in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. We will go ahead and enter the file into evidence. There's a couple of housekeeping things. If you haven't, I think most people have signed in on the sign-up sheet in the, the side there. Please do that if you haven't done so already. Um, please try to maintain six foot social distancing uh, out there today if you if you can if, uh, try to keep uh, according to your households and you received an ID badge when you came in a printed ID badge 
make sure that you go out the front entrance up there where you receive that badge so that they don't come hunting the entire building for you if you leave by another exit, okay? Um, with that, before, before we get started, Mr. Allman, um, if you plan on testifying here today, could you please stand and raise your right hand and take the oath? If you have any inkling of testifying, so you, okay. Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Very good. You can be seated. So with this, since this is a violation of, or this is an appeal of a zoning administrator's notice of violation, uh, Mr. Allman, I'm assuming that you're here representing uh, the uh, zoning administrator. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay, you pull the microphone just a little bit closer to you there. Um, so so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, you want to go ahead and uh, present your case and then call witnesses. And let, to, just to let you know the, the procedure we're going to do, uh, since this is a zoning administrator's notice of violation, uh, Mr. Ullman, who is representing the zoning administrator, will go first and th then uh, um, the Jordans will go and present their case People from the public at that point can give their testimony. So after those two things have occurred, and then the board will go, then there will be summation comments, and then the board will go ahead and consider the case. So I just wanted to go through the, the, our procedures here for those of you that haven't been through this before. Okay, Mr. Allman. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is James Allman, Assistant County Attorney on behalf of the Zoning Administrator, Mr. Jay Voigt. Mr. Voigt and I appear uh, before you today in regard to an appeal from a notice of violation um, on the property located at 6516 Freedom Avenue um, against the uh, Jordans. The Jordans are tenants of that property. Just this background, this matter began just over a year ago in August of 2020 when the Carroll County Zoning Administration received a complaint regarding a rooster on a lot less than one acres which is prohibited under the county code. During the investigation of the complaint, Zoning Inspector Mr. Scott Robinson spoke with Mr. Steve Jordan who informed Mr. Robinson that the rooster that was on the property was an emotional support animal for his wife Jessica Jordan. Due to the unique nature of um, this violation, county officials decided that the rooster would be allowed to stay on the property subject to conditions. Those conditions being the chicken coop must be erected at a minimum of 75 feet away from adjacent property lines and located in the rear yard. The rooster must be contained so it does not cause a nuisance or disruption to adjacent property owners. Following Dr. Maraid's opinion, it has been determined that the rooster should be kept inside at a minimum from dusk until dawn. And finally, that it is the property owner's responsibility to maintain control of the animal. And if any of the animals become a nuisance to the adjoining properties, then removal of the animals um, affected by this ruling will be required. Such conditions were memorialized in a letter to the Jordans dated August 25th, 2020. <clears throat> Since that time, there have been a number of complaints from surrounding community members of the rooster causing loud noises in the early morning and continuing throughout the day, and chickens running from the Jordans property onto adjacent properties. As a result of this, a notice vi of violation was sent to the Jordans and the property owner, Mr. Monroe Lee Fleming, stating that the five chickens and one rooster found on the property are, were causing nuisances and the raising of chickens on this lot is a violation of the Code of Public Laws and Ordinances of Carroll County, Chapter 158-074. The Jordan's property <coughs> is located in the R10,000 district, which can be found in the County Zoning Ordinance under Section 158-074. The purpose of that section, as is provided, is to provide for smaller size lots for single and two family dwellings. Under 15874G bulk requirements, the following minimum requirements shall be observed subject to the modified requirements 
of section 150.130. Included in the bulk requirements includes, quote, other principal permitted or conditional uses in lot area same as specified in R20, end quote. Under the principal per, um, permitted uses found in the R20 district um, includes agricultural, which is defined by the zoning code as providing any building or feeding pen in which farm animals are kept and um, shall comply with the distance requirements set forth in um, section 158.040. Agriculture is further defined um, as the raising of farm products for the use or sale, including livestock or poultry husbandry. The principal permitted use of ag requires the lot area um, <coughs> in the tw in the R20,000 district, which would be 20,000 square feet, thus um, meaning that the agricultural use, which was previously stated for the raising of um, poultry and husbandry, the Jordan's property, which is on 14,000 square feet, does not meet um, the requirements to have poultry husbandry on it. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, and I would like to call my first witness. Okay. Uh, I would like to call Mr. Jay Voigt. Can you please state your name for the record? My name is Jay Voigt. I'm the zoning administrator for Farrell County. My work address is 225 North Center Street. And how long have you been the zoning administrator? 11 years. Okay. And as the zoning administrator, are you familiar with the uh, zoning ordinance of Carroll County? Yes, I am. Are you familiar with the property located at 6516 Freedom Avenue? Yes. Can you tell me what that property is zoned? Uh, the property is zoned R10,000. And what type of lots are uh, traditionally found in the R10,000 zoning? Um, R10,000 zoning requires for um, a lot to be approved a minimum of 10,000 square feet. Um, this is my I'm oh, sorry. In the R10,000 zoning, um, the R10,000 stands for a minimum of 10,000 square feet per lot um, to be approved. Um, the neighborhood in that area uh, in the R10,000 zoning district are lots that are either right around 10,000 square feet or some of them are a little larger than that. <coughs> Most of those lots were created prior to the enactment of the ordinance. Well, that's why they don't necessarily meet the square footage for the, for the R10,000 district. Wait, would it be fair to say that um, the R10,000 district is for smaller lots in a more s neighborhood setting? Uh, that's correct. That's uh, in the description. Um, it states that it's for um, residential uses, um, smaller lots, higher density um, to the <coughs> housing. And um, are chickens or roosters permitted in the R10,000 district? In the R10,000 district, it refers you to the R20,000 district um, for any agricultural use, which raising of chickens is an agricultural use. Uh, poultry husbandry is what it's called. And in the R20,000 zoning district, district, it requires a minimum of 20,000 square feet to perform any agricultural operations. And what is the um, square footage to the best of your knowledge of the Jordan's property? Um, 14,000 square feet. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Void, I have an SDAT uh, readout of um, 6516. Can you um, read to the board on this, um, print out the, uh, the square feet? Uh, the property line, land area as recorded on the SDAT sheet is stating 14,000 square feet. Thank you, Mr. Void. I would like to enter um, this SDAT sheet as Exhibit 1. Okay, we will, we will accept that into evidence. So since the um, property is zoned R10,000 and is only 14,000 square feet, are roosters and chickens permitted on that property? Um, 
according to the code now you need a minimum of 20,000 square feet in the R10,000 zoning district to have any type of farm animals. And was a um, notice of violation sent to the Jordans? Uh, yes, it was. Is this a copy of that notice of violation? Yes, um, the notice of violation actually went to the property owner, which is what we do. Um, for all notice of violations, it goes to the owner of the property. Um, and this was sent to Mr. Monroe Lee Fleming on April 7th. And it stated uh, that due to the <coughs> chickens and roosters being a, a nuisance, uh, that they had to remove the, them from the property. Thank you. I'd like to introduce this as Exhibit 2. And we will accept that into evidence. I have no further questions at this time for Mr. Voigt. Okay. So does anyone from the audience have any questions of Mr. Voigt's testimony? And just of his testimony, <coughs> uh, again, you'll have the opportunity to testify later. Board members, any questions? I, just, just so that we're totally clear here. So livestock in any form is prohibited on a lot that's 14,000 square feet according to the code. That's correct. Okay, okay very good. Thank you, uh, Mr. Voigt. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, I would like to call my next witness, Mr. Scott Robinson. Okay. Uh, Mr. Robinson, um, can you please state your name for the record? Scott Robinson. And for whom are you uh, employed? I am an inspector for the Carroll County Zoning Administration. And um, as a zoning inspector, what are your responsibilities? Investigating complaints that are brought against properties that represent going against <coughs> regulations put forth in the zoning regulations. And are you familiar with the property located at 6516 Freedom Avenue? Yes, I am. When did you first become familiar um, with the property? Uh, that was back in 2020. I believe the first complaint was in September. Okay. And um, did you investigate um, the com or actually I want to back up. What was the complaint regarding? About a rooster and chickens and mainly the rooster's noise, the rooster calling. So. And did you visit the property? I went to the property and I saw that you were not allowed to enter the property. There was no trespassing sign, which we cannot go onto the property on an initial visit if there is no trespassing sign. So I went back and sent a 10-day letter. Can you explain to the board what a 10-day letter is? 10-day letter is sent out as an initial introduction of what is happening, why I'm contacting them, and gives them 10 days to contact me. If within that 10 days period they do not contact me or there's no form, whether email or phone call or anything else, then I have the option of sending another letter or turning it over to the administrator and then a notice of violation would be sent out. In um, this case, did you um, complete and work on an investigative report? Yes. Is this that investigative report? <laughs> Yes, this was the initial report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to enter this as um, Exhibit 3. Keep looking at it. Okay, we will accept that into evidence. Okay. So after the 10-day uh, letter was sent, can you um, tell the board what happened next? Well, the first phone call I received was from the husband of would that be mr jordan uh, mr jordan yes and we spoke about the um rooster and he said that it was for his wife as a support animal and i basically 
explain that you know you, if you could give us the paperwork that explains that it is a support animal and then we can go through the process as to what needs to be done okay and um, was such paperwork received eventually we received the paperwork from a social yeah the initial paperwork came from a Dr. Anita Marade, and it was sent to, it was addressed to Jessica Jordan. And can you um, read to the board what the uh, letter states? I mean, would you like me to read through the whole? I mean, I well, can. Well, if you could just. This just paragraph. This first paragraph, or second paragraph yeah. right there. I'm also familiar with the limitations imposed by your diagnosed disability and the need to mitigate those limitations and associated symptom, symptoms. As such, during your most recent consultation and evaluation, I approved the chicken, two pounds, as an emotional support animal for you. In my professional opinion, it is necessary that this chicken live with you because its presence will mitigate the symptoms of your disability by allowing you to fully enjoy your home and the common areas associated with your home, specifically the presence of the chicken will provide a calming effect for you, thereby allowing you to focus on household activities, allow you to reduce your anxiety, and relax in your home. Increase your ability to self-regulate. Thank you. I would like to introduce um, this exhibit into evidence, Mr. Chairman. And we will go ahead and accept that into evidence. Um, so after receiving um, that letter, um, can you describe to the board sort of how this investigation in August of 2020 resolved itself? We actually, after we received the letter, a letter written by myself and approved by Tom Devildis, who was the acting zoning administrator at the time. Jay Voigt was out on bereavement leave, so Tom had taken over, just to give a quick explanation as why Tom was there. Um, and I put forth a letter explaining the county's findings and what were the stipulations for her to keep, Mrs. Mrs. Jordan, to keep said rooster. Uh, Mr. Robinson, is this that letter? <coughs> yes, it is. Can you read to the board the um, conditions that are provided in the letter? Sure. After a review of the case, the county has decided to allow the rooster to stay on the property with the following rules. The chicken coop must be erected at minimum 75 feet from the adjacent property lines located in the rear yard. <coughs> the zoning administration is giving the owner of the coop two weeks to relocate the coop that is currently in use. The rooster must be contained so it does not cause a nuisance or disruption to the adjacent neighbors and properties. In the letter from Dr. Murad, she stated that in my professional opinion, it is necessary that, these, that this chicken live with you because its presence will mitigate the symptoms of your disability by allowing you to fully enjoy your home and common areas associated with your home. Following Dr. Murad's opinion, it has been determined that the rooster should be kept inside the house at the minimum from dusk till dawn. The declaratory ruling, dash one, dash 2015, states that it is, only, it is always the property owners slash tenants responsibility to maintain control of their animals. If the animals become a nuisance to the adjoining properties, the removal of the animals effective by this ruling will be required. Thank you. I would like to introduce this as an exhibit, Mr. Chairman. We will accept that into evidence. Okay. And after that letter was sent, was that the end of the complaints on this property? No. We actually... When did the complaints begin again? April of 2021. And did you investigate those complaints? Yes. And it was determined that the rooster was again. Hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> and um, what did you find when you? Uh, did, well, did you go out and visit the property? We. I spoke with the complainants. Okay, you spoke with the complainants. And then I went out to the property. The property again. I do not. I have not gone onto the property because I'm not permitted to. But I can see from the road where the chickens are. I can see the rooster. And then another case was brought up. And how many chickens uh, did you see from the road? 
I could see approximately four or five, but they were behind there with building material that was kind of blocking my view. And how many roosters? There was one rooster I could see. And based on, I understand that you were in the row, but how big would you say this rooster was? Um, I'd say maybe 18 inches tall. And did you, um, in the course of investigating, um, fill out an investigative uh, progress report? Yes. Is this a copy of that investigative progress report? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I would like to introduce this exhibit um, into evidence. We'll, we will accept that into evidence. <clears throat> So if you saw four or five chickens and one rooster, there were approximately five or six animals on the property? Mm -hmm. Yes. And are chickens and roosters permitted in the R10,000 districts? On lots less than 20,000 square feet, no, they are not. Uh, thank you, Mr. Robinson. I have no questions, uh, further questions for him at this time. Does anyone from the audience have any questions of Mr. Robinson's testimony? Okay, you, you need to go to the microphone <coughs> and identify yourself. Where was the trespassing uh, sign located? Um, I'm, so, I'm sorry, uh, before you speak, let's okay, please you. state your name, your address, occupation, and spell for the record your last name. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, Jessica Jordan. 6516 Freedom Avenue, Sykesville, Maryland, 21784. My address is a professional photographer and Ricky Master Practitioner. And what was the other thing? Spell for the record oh, your last name. J-O-R-D-A-N. Okay, thank you. Where was the trespassing sign located? Because we do not have one. When I originally came to the property back in 2020, there was a no trespassing sign at the front of the property. And after our conversation, Mrs. Jordan, you, had, you had specifically told me I was not permitted to come onto your property. Okay. So with, with, that, with that, by our standard, I am not permitted to go on your property. So I did not. Okay. I can look at your property from the roads, but I cannot go. I was not allowed to go on your property per your direction. Okay, but well, we still never had a trespassing sign, ever. can't understand you. Yep. You have to, to be closer to yeah. the microphone. I have anxiety with microphones. We don't have, we've never had one. Like, we've never had a trespassing sign ever. I've never put one up. My grandparents never put one up. We've never had a trespassing sign. And after, yes, once we give our testimony, I don't feel comfortable with either of these men on my property. But still, the fact is there was never any no trespassing sign before my statement was given. That is all. Okay, thank you. Quick um, redirect, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Robinson, could you see the property clearly from the road? Yes. And from the road, that was when you were able to observe the number of chickens and roosters? Yes. Thank you. I have uh, no further questions uh, for this witness. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you. Indulgence, please. Can you please state your name for the record, sir? David Day. And um, Mr. Day, um, where do you live? What is your address? 910 Trayer Avenue, Slexville, Maryland, 21784. And um, approximately how close would you say you live to the property located at uh, 6516 Freedom Avenue? The rear property line is adjoining to my side property line.
Um, so I have printed out um, from the uh, county mapping district a uh, satellite aerial view of the neighborhood and highlighted 6516, uh, which is the uh, property um, this case is regarding. With this highlighter, can you highlight your um, property, please? Do you want me to outline it or just highlight the number? Just highlight the number. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would like to introduce this um, we'll, we'll in accept that into evidence. This exhibit into evidence. Okay. I have this as Exhibit 7. Wife's well, kind of gone out of order. You can have it as Exhibit 7. Oh, oh. Just pre mark You've got an Exhibit 7 for something else? It's okay to have it as Exhibit 7. I just pre marked it. Okay, uh, Mr. Day, can you um, explain um, to the board your um, experience living at your property with the roosters and chickens on a property so close to yours? Um, <coughs> approximately a year ago, a little over a year ago, the Jordans purchased chickens. Um, they placed the coop um, to the rear of their property, which would have made it 20, 25 feet from our side, the side of our house, um, pretty much underneath our son's bedroom area. Also, it's the side of the house that is the bedroom area for the master side, too. Um, the, uh, the rooster would, would tend to crow off and on all day. It starts pretty early in the morning, about 5 a.m., um, depending on the uh, time of year. Um, also depends on the time of day that the, the rooster starts. It crows two or three times um, at a clip, off and on throughout the day. Um, Mr. Allman had asked my wife to track it. Um, she was obsessive about tracking the rooster's crowing. Um, but uh, and um, it, 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 the tracking does show it's off and on throughout the day, um, and that's only a, a, a small portion. Um, and is this, um, and your wife who is unable to be here today as correct. she's working, correct? Correct. Is this an accurate depiction of sort of the notes she took when she was tracking the um, every time the rooster crowed? That is her depiction. Okay, correct. can you just list to the board the different times? Um, the board doesn't have time for that, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty much every day and there's four or five um, depictions on some days. If it looks like it's a weekend, um, there'll be 10 or 12 uh, recordings that she did during that day. And this is of the rooster crowing? This is of the rooster crowing. So that was typically, she would jump up and mark it down at your request. Um, and then uh, often it would crow two or three times. You know, roosters typically don't crow once. Um, I would like to um, enter this exhibit um, into evidence, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and we'll accept that into evidence. Was um, the rooster to the best of your knowledge, was the rooster outside? As far as I know, the rooster stayed outside. Was the rooster outside for a majority of the time of day? As far as I know, I would start hearing it about five in the morning and I would hear it throughout the day um, into the evening. And when you would hear it, you, was the rooster, could you tell if the rooster was outside? If it had been in their home, I doubt that I would have heard it. Okay. And can you just explain um, to the board how this sort of constant crowing of the rooster has um, personally affected you? Um. Personally, it's, it's a nuisance and it, it was annoying um, throughout the day if you were trying to um, carry on a conversation or watch television. Um, it, it could become, an, it was an annoyance. It, it uh, 
didn't necessarily affect me nearly as much as it did my wife. Um, she complained that it was ear piercing um, and that it interrupted her ability to um, enjoy a television show. <coughs> she ended up starting um, using noise canceling headphones to watch the television where they were Bluetooth and she just kind of blocked out the sound from the rooster. Uh, thank you. And um, on the Jordan's property, is there any type of buffer that they put up or any sort of mitigation that they attempted to, um, you know, cover the sound of the noise? Um, no, they didn't. There isn't a buffer of any type. They did move the pen per the, per the request to the back of the house, um, which did increase the distance, but um, the sound of the rooster was still very evident. Okay. And are these, I have a series of photographs here. Um, are these photographs of the, um, the Jordan's property? Um, they're photographs of our yard and the Jordan's property. Thank you. So they, they show, um, I, I believe you requested those photographs to give you an idea of the relationship between our property and the Jordan's property. Uh, yes, I um, would like to introduce uh, these photographs uh, into evidence, Mr. Chairman. And we will accept them into evidence. And um, because you live so close, um, it's not just a rooster on the property, is that correct? Correct. Uh, what other farm animals are on the uh, property? Um, they have chickens. I don't know exactly how many. I've never looked that hard to see, to, to count them. But there are several? You there, are, there are several. Okay. And um, do the chickens ever wander off their property? They have. Um, at <coughs> one point, the county uh, animal control was called out um, because they had been wandering into the road. They tended to get out. Um, the Jordans did rectify that situation um, once animal control was called and, and it was brought to their attention. I'm not sure what they discussed with them. But the chickens are still on the property? The chickens are on the property. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anything else you would like to say to the board? Um, The, uh, the, the rooster is no longer on the property. Um, the Jordans have um, removed the rooster from the property at this point in time. Um, our concern is once this is over, um, that a, either another rooster or the return of that particular rooster will come back um, and we'll start this process once again. Um, it is an annoyance. Um, as I stated, it, it's more of a nuisance and an annoyance to my wife than it is to me personally. Um, I tend to overlook folks, um, what they do. Um, to my wife, it uh, is ear piercing and then also she has an, has an issue with being able to <coughs> enjoy the house as she feels she should be able to. Um, it's also caused some turmoil between us at, at different points in times over our views of it. Thank you. I, I really appreciate uh, your testimony. Mr. Chairman, I don't have any further questions at this time. Does anyone from the audience have any questions of his testimony? Mr. What, um, Mr. Jordan. And Mr. Jordan, uh, state your name, your address, occupation, and spell for the record your last name. My name is Steve Jordan. Um, 6516 Freedom Avenue. Uh, I do like, I work for Brother Services. I do like house repairs, roofing, and siding, building. Um, and my last name is spelled J O R D A N. Um, a couple questions is, is I've never been contacted by animal control over chickens. I have had a complaint about my dogs one time because my kids let them out at a birthday party and they did go across the road. I'm gonna object to this. Is there a question? 
He's testifying. Yeah, you're, you're supposed to ask questions of his testimony, not give oh, okay. your own testimony. Okay, I apologize. Well, that was my question. Is this, is, is how, how would he know that I had animal control called on my chickens? You can answer that. Um, the animal, animal control, control officer was responding to um, a phone call from me to animal control. Um, I contacted the zoning board in reference to this. Um, the zoning board sent me to animal control. Animal control officer responded, came to my house. He also went and spoke to Miss Jordan. Um, when his return back to my home, his response to me was, boy, and I quote, boy, she has a mouth on her. Um, and then he um, proceeded to um, tell me what he spoke to them about. He spoke to them about the dog. At the same time, the chickens were out running. They were running in the road. Um, and I believe he made a report that did show this. And Mr. Allman, I believe, is looking for the report. I am, and, and a letter, um, so uh, your indulgence, please. Um, you can continue with the questioning, sir. I also have another question um, based, I guess, on the evidence that he turned in with times regarding his wife and she's not here to be here to take the oath to say that those are truthful times. Is that allowed can, as well? Can, can you step a little closer? Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> um, I guess the evidence that was entered with the times of the crowing from his wife mm -hmm. and she's not here to be here, I guess, to take the oath, is that, I guess, allowed or okay? We have accepted that in doubt. Okay, uh, so I was just wondering as I, as I, about that as well. That's all the questions I have, honestly. Okay, Mr. Allman, can you produce those documents? I have them in my office. <laughs> um, I don't have them here. Um, so um, if we take a break at some point, I will be able to produce them. Okay, and, and what we'll do is when, when we do take a break, uh, we'll allow you to go get that, and at that point, uh, when we come back from our break, uh, we can go. You can go ahead and introduce those um, those pieces of evidence. Thank you. Okay. Are there any further questions? Board member, Mr. Caldwell. Um, thank you for your testimony, sir. Um, are you an owner occupier? I am the owner of the property at 910 Trayer Avenue. Thank you. My question is, what did you, I thought I heard you correctly, but when the chickens were at the rear yard of the Jordans, they were how far away from your house? Um, our house it w was, um, had a major addition to it, so our house is 12 feet from the property line. Um, it's it's um, under, the, I believe, the zoning board but there was a variance that was granted basing based because of the pre-existing structure um, so i know for a fact that it's 12 feet to the property line the chicken coop was approximately 10 to 12 feet on the other side of the property line um, roughly 20 to 25 feet okay so i just wanted to, the clarification on that okay thank you any other questions board members just one um, you said the rooster is no longer there the rooster is no longer at the property. And the other chickens? The other chickens, I believe are, there are some. I don't know how many. Um, <coughs> Mr. Colwell. Um, when was that rooster removed? Approximately three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, okay. Ms. Uh, does it? Based on what you can observe and recognizing that you're not you know, sitting there watching your neighbors all day long, does it ever appear that the rooster or any of those chickens were living in the house? It does not. Um, I have seen Miss Jordan sitting out with them on occasion, um, and and out out with them, but not necessarily. Um, I don't know that they live in the house. And again, I don't sit and watch them all day long. Thank you. Finished board members? Yes, thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, I have a, a letter from the Humane Society from March of uh, 2021 um, that I would like to introduce um, into evidence. This is regarding um, 
the uh, vocalizing of animals um, on the uh, Jordans property. Okay, and this, this letter is addressed to who? To the Jordans. Okay, could, could, is it a lengthy letter? It is not a lengthy letter. Could, could you read that into the record, please? I can. So March 3rd, 2021, dear resident, our department has received a call from your neighbors who asked us what we can do to help ease the noise they are experiencing because you're a rooster. By sending this letter, it is uh, the first step taken by animal control requesting that you make every effort to curb noise emanating from your yard slash home and advising you of the county law on vocalizing. I've enclosed the synopsis of the Carroll County animal laws um, with this section about vocalizing highlighted for your convenience. Please read it and take actions accordingly. Vocalizing animals can be a real nuisance to those wishing to work in their yards, enjoy sitting or eating on their patios or decks, etc. And while you may have the right to own animals, your neighbors deserve and can expect not to be unduly bothered by others' animals. We do enforce the provisions of this law uh, for the county, and by way of this letter, we hope you will remedy the excessive noise without any further intervention. Thank you uh, for your attention to this request. Most sincerely, Dawn Kinna, Animal Control Officer. Okay, thank you. And you wanna enter that into evidence? I would. Okay, we will accept that into evidence. I have no further witnesses um, at this time. Okay, very good. Okay, the Jordans, can you come forward to the microphones here and you can go ahead and present your case, your testimony. Uh, I have documents that uh, I don't know if you guys would be interested in seeing. If you want them entered into evidence, I, I you, you can so. go ahead I and ask me. And I guess so. And, okay. and you can either do it individually um, as a group or you can do it as you talk about the actual document. Okay. okay. Um, I guess starting from the beginning, we... Okay, w wait a minute. I'm sorry. Please, please identify yourself. I know you already I'm did. I'm sorry. I've never done this before. That, 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 that's fine. Uh, Jessica Jordan, 6516 Freedom Avenue, Sykesville, Maryland. Um, professional photographer, Reiki Master Practitioner, J-O-R-D-A-N. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess to start, we purchased the chickens July 5th, 2020. 2020, yep. Um, it was to, yes, help me. COVID affected my PTSD um, very, very badly. And I was just starting to prepare for homeschooling. So not only were we going to allow the chickens to help me with my mental health, but also to use it as a, a class form for my children to learn more about agriculture and chickens, how to care for them, etc. cetera. Um, throughout the time, they're not sold. Eggs aren't sold or, you know, we just use them for our own eating, but they are our pets. They are not looked at as farm animals. Um, yes, we did get a complaint. As soon as Elvis, the rooster, we have one, had one rooster, um, and he started crowing maybe a month after we got him. We got them as chicks at six weeks old. Um, at that time, you know, he was still a chick. We were in the process of getting him certified as an ESA. Um, once the complaints started coming in, we did submit his certification, which we have. Um, we submitted the first, after you know the complaint, we submitted the first letter from my therapist. We have that as well. It's all can be submitted into evidence if you'd like. I don't know how that's done. And, and Mr. Jordan, go ahead and give that to Mr. Dixon and he will label that and we'll accept that into evidence. They did briefly read that letter that my therapist gave me, which was already submitted into evidence by them. I have it on my hand as well. Um, I believe it was um, not Jay, but I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Scott. Scott. Um, he said that, yes, I, I needed to keep my chicken in the house with me. And I said, as an ESA, trying to educate what an ESA actually is, the stipulations 
behind an ESA, ESA laws, which I did try to educate everybody in the zoning administration. Um, but a, an emotional support animal does not need to live in your house. A horse can be an emotional support animal. And I grew up on a horse farm. There's no way a horse can live in a house with you. I do understand horses cannot live on our property. There needs to be at least three acres per four to five horses, from my understanding, from what I used to live with. Um, I did state and explain <coughs> that, and I had my therapist rewrite the wet letter because they were nitpicking the wording that she used. She did rewrite the letter, in which I have the second letter with me, and it states, if you would like me to read, um, I'm sorry, just let me, um, as to, uh, I am familiar with the limitations imposed by your diagnosed disability and the need to attack, might mitigate those limitations and associated symptoms. As such, during our most recent consultation and evaluation, I approved a chicken two pounds as an emotional support animal for you. In my professional opinion, it is necessary that this chicken live with you because its presence, I can't get that word, mitigate the symptoms of your disability by allowing you to fully enjoy your home and the common areas associated with your home. Specifically, the presence of the chicken will provide a calming effect for you, thereby allowing you to focus on household activities, allow you to reduce your anxiety and relax in your home, increase your ability to, to um, self-regulate. I'm sorry, there's one more. Okay, but there's two different letters. The states one more is more, um, more more information about how the, the chickens can be in or outside. With that submitted into, that we can submit that into evidence, um, we received another letter from zoning, which they did not submit into evidence, and I was told by um, Jay that I was lying, that this letter does not exist. It says, Dear Mrs. Jordan, after review of the case and the county has decided to allow the rooster to stay on the property with the following rules. The chicken coop must be erected a minimum of 75 feet away from the adjacent property lines and located in the rear yard. We did move this coop again as stated. It is right up against my house. Literally the pen is up against my siding of my house, which is right next to my living room, where yes, I do watch TV. The next room following over is my bedroom where I sleep. I am a very light sleeper and I do not wake up once for my rooster ever crowing at any time of the day. I'm at home, I work at home mostly. I'm a photographer as stated. I work mostly on the weekends, but I'm mostly at home. He sometimes, yes, will crow three times, but then he also sometimes only does one. I can have my grandmother in the back room over and doing her hair for two to three hours. So I also do hair on the side. There's times where he does not crow the entire time she's at my house. Moving on with this, the rooster must be contained so it does not cause a nuisance or disruption to the adjacent neighbors and properties. As Humane Society did come over, we do have them in enclosed straight run. They do not come out of the run. It's enclosed, it is gated, it is locked up. They don't come out. Our chickens have never been in the road. The dogs, yes, ran into the road once. The chickens I sometimes will let out and I watch them. They walk around the yard with me and I keep them on our property. I guide them if they try to go off, I rear them back. I have complete control over most of my chickens. Um, it says case seven, number 71-20- whatever, oh, Z1-20-0117 has been closed by Scott Robinson, zoning inspector. Nothing on here states that my chicken needs to live inside with me. Nothing here states anything about a noise. This is a rewritten letter, second letter submitted that they say that I do not have and is signed in pen or marker or whatever, in pen by them. As stated, um, yes, we did get rid of, or rehome, I don't wanna say get rid of, but rehomed in hopes that this case goes better in my favor. The hens were never an issue. I don't know why the hens were brought into it. Um, before even purchasing chickens, I did look up the zoning laws. I did not realize I was in a certain zone, but I, it did state that you could have six chickens under an acreage of land. 
um, growing up on a farm, again, seeding, that five horses can live on three acres of land. All the eggs that you eat, unless you're getting it from a local farm, and all the chicken that you eat, anything that's on your table, unless it is local, those chickens are kept in cages, stacked upon cages, stacked upon cages. Game birds, are they grow very fast. They're beefed up for you to eat. The chickens are in factories, left in small cages, brutal treatment, and lights. The chickens need 12 hours of light to lay an egg. So they're just kept in lights. The brutality of chickens in the industry is awful. Chickens don't need land. I can understand the rooster. I can understand the noise. But hens are not noisy. They stay in their cage, their, their straight run, and they help me. I go outside. There's times where I could not get out of bed. I'm expected to take care of my children, to homeschool my children. And having PTSD, my father raped me. I explained that to his wife, carrying my chicken over, begging them to please stop. They explained the RESA. And she says, the hens can stay, and I quote, but that thing needs to go. There is, I have pictures and videos of her recording me bawling my eyes out and laughing in my face. They are related to my grandfather, who owns my property. They are family. Not once did they reach out to my grandfather and saying, hey, like, there's some issues. No, they went straight to zoning. Not once did they contact my family, their family, to even see there was anything wrong. Twice they have reached out, and twice I've been not an ounce in empathy. My, my needs are completely ignored. So we did rehome Elvis to a new home in town, in Union Town of all places, and I was mind blown that they're in town. But he's in an amazing home where he is loved. So in that meantime, I did rescue who I'm holding now as Taurus. And I'm very good with chickens. It's, I'm a chicken whisperer. They have a soft spot in my heart and her family uh, from another owner, um, half her flock was murdered by a fox. And the next night, the rest of them were drained to blood dry from a weasel, and she was left and found on top of her dead siblings. So I did take her in, and we had a camping trip planned for my son, and I didn't want to leave her. And so I brought her along with me. She's gone to my camping trips. She's gone to the beach. She's gone to South Carolina, Charleston and drove eight, nine, ten hours with me. She sat in this courtroom and at once has made a commotion for you guys. She sleeps in my bedroom. She wakes me up every morning and flies to my bed and sleeps on my pillow next to me and waits for me to wake up, that I take her outside, that she can have time with my hands so she can have a normal chicken life but then still be able to serve me. She goes into stores with me. She goes into restaurants with me. She shops with me. She is currently wearing a diaper, so she does not make a mess when she goes out into public. But she does, to be a happy chicken, needs to mingle with my other hens. My other hens being outside does get me out of my bed when there's some times where I can't get out of bed till one o'clock. I have all the papers for Taurus. I have another letter. This was recently done. I did rehome Elvis. Once his ESA was expired, as you can see on that, this is August 13th. I have pictures of where I have dropped him off, rehomed, to show that he is there. I have statements by the new owners of him that he is there, where children can come with their books and read to him and the other hens as a way of helping the other children in the community. But I do have a recent letter. This is August 16, 2021, where we did re we registered this one now and have a new letter stating again in more detail of my condition and how she helps me. Hens were never an issue. It was always the Elvis. I understand there is a zoning, the zoning um, square, footage. square footage, but then you look into Baltimore County where the square footage is even smaller and even less regulations on it. I don't, I don't understand zoning. I don't understand the square footage at all. I honestly think it should be re-looked at, that especially with COVID, a lot of people went to this, where we were so scared to go into stores that we wouldn't be able to 
help our own families and not rely on <coughs> in the government, really. It's not having to go into stores that we can grow our own gardens, which I was doing as well as helping my kids learn how to grow prop crops. But then also providing our own eggs for our own families and knowing where they come from. Um, I have severe health issues as well that I like to know where my food's coming from and not pumped with hormones and other preservatives, etc. cetera. Um, I've talked to <coughs> my neighbors that are next to us on all sides that are the closest to the coop where they are the farthest away. And personally, I've talked to each one and none of them have an issue. Some of them say they grew up on a farm. That's just farm life. Behind us on Center Street, our freedom and Center Street behind us, there's horses. If you go down the road a little bit, on Freedom Avenue, there's Piney Ridge Elementary where my son goes to school. Across from the house, you can hear ducks quacking away. We are surrounded by farm animals, all on our road, all in our neighborhood. We are surrounded by dogs. Literally every single house around their property, around our property, is dogs. Dogs, scientifically, has a higher barking decibel than a rooster's crow. So I don't understand why there's a need of noise canceling headphones. Again, when my coop is right next to my living room window, I can open up my living room window and give them treats, which I have pictures of as well. Um, I don't know what else I might need. I have notes as well if I need to look over real quick. My husband can go and while I'm reading. Steve Jordan, 6516 Freedom Avenue. Um, J-O-R-D-A-N. Wait, wait, wait a minute, before you go, we need to be able to ask questions. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Oh, I apologize. I, don't, I, okay. Okay. I was trying to read more. Um, I actually do have a little bit more. Um, well, actually, I think he was trying, He was going to handle that aspect. So, okay, you can ask questions. Okay, does anyone from the audience have any questions of Ms. Jordan's testimony? Uh, Mr. Allman. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, just a few questions. Um, the letter from Dr. Morade, um, August 21st, 2020. Um, here's a copy. Okay. I highlighted um, a sentence there. Um, can you please read that to the board? I approved a chicken two pounds as an emotional support animal for you. So approve a chicken, which would be one chicken that's, and two pounds. Emotional support. The other one's one. And all of them were approved by Scott with the second letter that was given that you guys did not have because you stated it did not exist. I was told I was a liar in so many words and was told to bring this letter as, a, as proof because it did not exist. So, but, but wait a minute, in, in response to Mr. Allman's question. But yes, one, one animal is only registered in ESA. None of the rest of them, none of the hens are. Okay. okay, and um, then you mentioned um, you have you rehomed uh, the former uh, rooster. Uh, where is was he rehomed? I'm sorry, he I missed that. He was rehomed in Uniontown, Union Bridge, near Francis Scott Key. And um, is that a permanent arrangement? That is a permanent arrangement. I am able to visit him at any time. This is 30 minutes away. I have an open agreement with the owners that I am able to visit him at any time. It, the whole farm is basically open up to the public for the public to visit the chickens. So yes, it is a permanent arrangement. I did that to hopefully help my case since the hens were not an issue and only the rooster was an issue. So you rehomed him because the, the rooster was an issue. Um, but then, if I understood your testimony, you have a new rooster on the property? I have no roosters on the property at all. Um, what? I'm so, is, that's a, this is that's a, hen. a That's a hen, okay. Or else I'm sure you would have heard a crow at some point during this conversation. And a hen would be characterized as a chicken or poultry or husbandry. Would that be or correct? pets. Or it actually, technically, a ESC is a working class animal. They are not even considered a pet or livestock or farm animal. They are a working class animal. I am just referring to um, the determination of generally that a chicken would be referred to as poultry or husbandry. 
Is that correct? Yes. You mentioned a letter from August of this year, 2021. Um, do you have that letter with you? What letter are you referring to? That you had a, a new letter um, from a therapist regarding yes, that's the new. Right. Do you mind if I look at that? Absolutely. No, that's, oh, actually I have two letters. I have one from my psychiatrist and I have one from a therapist that I see every single week. Thank you. Which, depending on when we get out of here, I might miss it. Uh, thank you, um, Ms. Jordan. I would again just um, point to this sentence that reads, I approved a chicken two pounds as an emotional support animal for you. Okay. Do we need to put this in the evidence as well? If you would like to submit that into evidence, we will go ahead and accept that. Uh, hold on, here's Taurus's thing. And you already have their, this is the first letter. I think they already have Whatever, they can have that one too. And how many, um, oh, I'm sorry. Would you like your exhibit seven? <clears throat> yes, thank you. And just currently, how many hens or chickens are, I'm sorry, I'm getting the terminology wrong, are currently on the property? We have five that live outdoors in an enclosed run that cannot be opened unless we open it. And then I have this one, which would make the sixth one that lives inside with me. She has outdoor time in which she is enclosed with my hands for a certain amount of time and then I bring her back in and when she stays the rest of the day, but she does need outdoor time to eat grass and look for bugs, etc. Mingle with the chickens, normal chicken things to be a healthy chicken. Therefore, to help me. Um, I'm. This um case has been postponed, uh, or this hearing has been postponed several times, um, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, and from what I was told from the board was it was due to um you're going on vacation. That um this summer we were finally you know kind of allowed to do things again, uh, as the pandemic was getting better. Um. When did you go on uh, those vacations? Do you know the dates? Um, July 2nd through the 5th. And July 25th through August. Uh, you guys came back the 2nd or the 1st, and then I was on vacation for another week. Okay, and during the vacation, did you have either Elvis or Taurus with you? Yes, I did. And I have plenty of documentation to prove that as well. Do you have that documentation with you today? I don't have it in printed form, but I do have plenty of photos that I have documentation of and videos and etc. On the beach, in hotel rooms, in the camping, in tents, everything. In restaurants, in stores. I have no further questions at this time. Board, board members, yeah. Mr. Caldwell. Um, your first letter, um, Ms. Jordan, said it was dated um, 8th of August, sorry, 17th of August, 1988. And then you said, you testified that you purchased chickens in uh, 5th of July, 2020. So what did you use for emotional support animal during that time? In between. I did not have an emotional support animal at that time. I was really struggling and was to the point where my husband was considering <coughs> taking me to a rehabilitation center for mental health. And we were trying to find other avenues to help my mental health before having to unfortunately send me to where I need, can get it the best. Okay. This, was, this was during lockdown COVID as well, so she wasn't on there. Which I think um, is the reason. My second question is, um, are uh, chickens al uh, allowed under your lease as pets? Yes. 
Do you have do you happen to have a copy of your lease or anything like that? My grandparents are landlords and approved of having chickens on the property. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. No further questions. Any mm -hmm. questions? Um, <clears throat> just to clarify, uh, your service animal now, the one that is registered or licensed, which one is that? That is um, Taurus Elvis's expired August of thir 13, 2021, in which the same day that expired, I rehomed him. And we have I images of that as well. Okay. And you, you referenced this letter from Mr. Robinson from the zoning department? Yes. I, I'm, I'm reading over this and it just, it recognizes that the chicken coop must be moved a minimum of 75 feet away. The rooster must be contained so it does not cause a nuisance or disruption. And then the, there is a notation that the case was closed, but I'm, I'm trying to understand the relevance of how that suggests that the hens were still okay on the property. Because the init he initially approved of all the chickens to be on the property, not just my rooster. Do you have that in writing somewhere? Because I this letter does not say that. It might have been in the other two letters that were sent out as well. There was there's two more letters. And you, you have those with you? I can I think they've already been submitted. I mean there's this, this one. Uh, exhibit no. five. Exhibit five is the original one from August twenty twenty. But even verbally talking to them, they said I could keep all of my chickens that I had. I'm gonna object to that as hearsay. So exhibit five, I so that's not in, in exhibit five. That, that's not what's expressed in exhibit. I was five. no. I was just objecting to what she was claiming was said to her. But that's. Oh. So my, it, you want me to? I can come up. Uh, could you please? Okay, I've got exhibit five here. I'm a bit confused at this point. Yeah. Okay, I do have that one. Well, why is that objectifiable when you took the letter of what she was documenting as far as crowing? Anybody can type right down the times. I I'm just doing it for the record, ma'am. Okay, so, so this, that's exhibit five. So if everything, all of the references that I'm reading in this letter are only referring to the rooster. Do you have some other documentation, written documentation where Either Mr. Robinson or Mr. Voigt gave you written permission to have anything other than your service animal on the property? No, it was just an agreement that I could. Okay, so nothing in writing? They didn't write anything about having to get rid of the hens. It was always addressed to the rooster. That was always it. The noise ordinance was about the rooster. The nuisance was about the rooster. It was never addressing my hens. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to speak for the zoning administrator, but it's my understanding can that the, can the issue... Can you speak for me too, though, or do I... Is it just at me? It's just at yeah, it's, it's, it's my understanding that the, the question here is that poultry is not permitted on a lot that's less than 20,000 square feet. Um, and that's what we're here to decide today. That was I, my understanding what we are looking at, whether it is permitted or not permitted. Um, I just know that they've, I mean, I don't have it in written form, but I've talked to them several times on the phone. I've talked to them through text messaging. And it was stated that I could have at least one rooster and five hens, only six chickens were allowed on the property. But the whole issue was always about Elvis. That's why it was never discussed in the letter form. Okay, but, but there's but no. But I don't have it in written form. I only have it in verbal conversation yeah, that I could keep one all one of one them because I was only allowed to have six chickens. chickens on the property. Okay, thank you. Um, one other quick question. I, and I, I apologize if I misunderstood this. You indicated that you homeschool your children? I did last year. They're going back into public school this year. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, board members? I'm still in the same fall as far as the, I, I got the ADA and the service animal. I am confused about the other poultry because the letter from the therapist speaks of a chicken or a singular chicken. Um, I saw the coop and the poultry presence, two entirely separate things. Um, 
Is maybe is any ministry looking? Well, the, I think what we're looking. I mean, turn to page two, which is the actual this formal notice of violation, and this is for clarification. The raising of chickens is a violation of Code of Public Laws and Ordinances of Carroll County Chapter 158074, R 10,000 Residence District. And that's the notice of violation. And this is an appeal of the notice of violation. And what we're here to, I mean, it, it very clearly states that in order to have farm animals of any type, you must have a minimum of 20,000 square feet of property. And Right. So, and that's my understanding. I just, you mind. I just the testimony from Ms. Jordan that she's been given permission to have these additional uh, chickens on the, on the premises just surprises me. That's what I appreciate you asking this in rain someplace because I haven't seen it. Yeah, maybe I've missed no, something. It's, I didn't find it in here. <clears throat> No, it was just always when they talked to me, it was always about all this. They are very aware of the hens, but that was never the issue. They never said I had to get rid of the hens. It was always just the rooster. Each time that even the county commissioner was pulled into it, he put in a complaint and had no idea who we were, lived near us, had anything to do with our property, but still put in a complaint but, but for it. I, I'm going to read the second paragraph here where the notice of violation, the formal notice of violation from April 7th, this is in the file, April 7th, 2021. This letter will serve as a, a bold print, formal notice of violation, end of, form, uh, end of bold print. Please remove the chickens, including the rooster, within 30 days. So th this, is, this is what went out on April 7th, we were going to have the hearing. I, I believe early June or sometime in June, and it was postponed twice. It, well, it, we were gonna, yeah, we were gonna have it in June, then July, and it now. Was only postponed it, once. Um, we only postponed it once. I only postponed it once. So, so we we've had it postponed since April seventh when this notice went out. April seventh, sort of, in mm -hmm. May seventh is when the uh, the deadline for removing the other chickens and the rooster. So it says within 30 days. So that's that, that's what we have, Mr. Snyder, in response to your question, just so that we're crystal clear. This is this is in writing in on the second page of the documentation we have in front of us. And it's also entered, enter, entered into evidence. Okay, any other questions of Ms. Jordan's uh, testimony? Okay, very good. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. Mr. Jordan. Do I need to do my name again? Or? Yeah, yes, please. Okay, fine. Uh, Steve Jordan, 6516 Freedom Avenue, uh, J-O-R-D-A-N. Um, I, I also want to touch on what we just talked about um, with the other chickens. Um, if you notice, every single letter that you guys probably have only talks about a rooster until you see it right here about the hens. Nothing's ever discussed about the hens because, like, like she said, we were verbally told that it was okay to have the hens. And every complaint has only been about the rooster. So I guess maybe we're also here to have some leniency on even being able to have the chickens because nothing has been formally printed or documented. I mean, I even took off work to have a conversation with these two gentlemen who began to tell me that I asked them, I said, so you're just taking people's words. And Jay told me no, he always sends out an inspector. I asked him what his inspector found. He says that you have a rooster. I said, yes, everybody knew it, that they're in an enclosed pen. I said, yes, because you guys asked us to put them in an enclosed pen, so we did. And he also said that he didn't make any noise, the rooster, while he was there. Yet he still filed and said that his investigation said that he was being a nuisance. So he was believing other people's words, even though his own inspector didn't find that to be true on site. Now that's just verbal, well, what I have, like I said, we ha I literally took off work so we could have a phone conversation because we couldn't meet in person, I guess because still some of the stipulations. Mr. Jordan, I don't, I don't want to interrupt your testimony here, but let, let's, let's be perfectly clear here. The reason we're here today is because you're appealing 
I don't care about the peripheral issues, but the, you are appealing the zoning administrator's um, letter of April 7th that is a formal notice of violation. So that's what we're here to talk about. Yes, sir. And in that, it says, please remove the chickens, including the rooster, within 30 days. Failure to comply could result in a fine of $500 a day assessed from the date of the notice of <laughs> violation as each day the violation exists as a separate offense. So that's what we're here to talk about, not the peripheral stuff. Okay. So, so in, in this, I, I don't care what is said, your appeal is of the zoning administrator's findings, and that's this page right here is why the reason we're here today. Okay. So if you could either refute what is here in, in that in some way, shape, or form, th this is this is an appeal of this decision. I'm, I'm so you need to tell us how this is th how this is not a correct decision okay. according to the zoning laws. Okay. Okay. Um, I know. And, and I didn't mean to interrupt no, you, but, I, but I, I think we're going clear, down a rab no, another clear, rabbit trail, okay? I, I do, I guess I have a semi-question, I don't know if it's interactive like that, but if he is emotional support certified, or was, and you're telling me to get rid of him, that's still allowed. Is that what I'm understanding? What letter regarding or not, if he, at the time of this letter, he was still certified as an emotional support item. Getting rid of him is violating rights of hers, correct? Or am I not correct? Because if that's the case, how am I allowed to even accept this? Because you've already violated her rights to even have an emotional support animal, and you're telling me I have to get rid of her, or I'm gonna be fined $50 a day here forward. Mr. Allman, would you like to respond to that? I would. Um, Mr. Jordan's correct that the right does exist to have an emotional support animal. However, that is not an unconditional right, that there are guidelines from the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development, which enforces the Fair Housing Act, which um, under the Federal Fair Housing Act, as amended in 1988, prohibits discrimination based on um, disabilities, physical and mental. Um, however, um, HUD, and the Department of Justice have issued guidelines regarding uh, the veracity of, um, of emotional support animals and make it clear that it is not an unconditional right, that there are circumstances where if the animal um, is causing a nuisance or is not controlled by the owner, then um, the, uh, the um, the rights that attach to the emotional support animal um, no longer exist. And I can, I have that can go point? further in, I was gonna bring that up more in the summation period. Okay, so there's the clarification on that. Okay. I, I just still confused because like I said, he, he said he sends out his own investigators yet they didn't present anything. All they have is they've, they've gotten complaints but they haven't had any proof that he was even being a nuisance besides the but, word of another but person. We, we are here, look, look we are I, here I because it's a zoning issue where the Board of Zoning Appeals, I'm, I'm not an expert on poultry. Um, I know that roosters crow, I know that hens don't. Um, I know that hens lay eggs, roosters don't, okay? That's about the extent of what I know about poultry. My grandfather raised poultry, that's the extent of what I know about it. What we are here today as the Board of Zoning Appeals is your, your appeal of the formal notice of violation that you received on April 7th. So as it relates to that, you can go forward with your testimony. It says, but it says on the, on the paper, it says that we found your tenant has five chickens and one rooster that are causing a nuisance. Do, and and you testified, your wife testified that there are, at the present time, six, six head yeah. of poultry on the farm. Um, and the, it, the, what I'm talking about is, is, the, is the proof of being a nuisance. Is it just but based off of complaints? The but but yeah, we are looking at the code, and the code says, the code the says reason. you're not allowed to have chickens on a lot less than 20,000 square feet. Your lot it was testified to that it was 14,000. That's the issue that we are dealing with. Okay. 
All the other issues are peripheral. That's not that's not our charge. Can I add something, or do I need to restate my name and everything? No, no you, you go ahead. You can add to it. Oh, okay. Um, again, it was verbally talking to him, but when I was looking for my about zoning, because I did try to look up the rules for them, and I said that you know online it says that under an acreage of land you can have up to six chickens. And he says he does approve, uh, J, J, he does approve of it as long as there's not, like he is lenient with the hens as long as there's not an issue standing. So moving forward, if we do, we rehome the, the rooster, <coughs> he's already stated to us that he does allow hens on property less than what is asked of as long as there's no issues so if but but we're dealing with what the code is we're, we're not allowed to make code the commissioners are the ones that make code the county commissioners not this board we we are charged with upholding the code as they are written not as they're written in other counties that you testified that it's a difference in in uh, the code in baltimore county that's not our role our role is to uphold the codes of carroll county uh, as they're presently written. But mental health actually takes precedence over zoning laws. I, I mean, I know that part, but even still, moving forward, there's no rooster. Where it, does that lead us the, the, now? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's a rooster or a hen. Poultry doesn't matter. It, it, but they're not being sold, they're not being distributed, they're not it, being that doesn't, used that anyway. doesn't have anything to do. It's a what you have is defined as poultry. That's de that's defined in our zoning code. It is not allowed on a lot less than 20,000 square feet. And you presently live on a lot that's less than 20,000 square feet. Let me give you an example. A welding shop is not allowed in the agricultural zone. We cannot approve a welding shop in the agricultural zone. We cannot do that. We can't approve poultry on a lot less than 20,000 acres. This was a notice of violation, and we're here to uphold the law. Even though we have letters of approval. You, 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 you don't have, what you have, what you have, the reason for us being here so today. So all of their letters are null and voided? We are here discussing this letter that was, that was dated April 7th. I'm confused about the letter of approval that you're referencing. What what letter of approval? But but that's that's peripheral. We're we're here on the on the appeal. But my point it's being, there's no. I have not seen a letter of approval from the zoning administrator. There, there has been words of of we have approved a rooster on the site. My question as is, as is that why would they? As a service animal with conditions. But okay. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's why. The second letter doesn't state the same conditions as the first one. This first letter had to be rewritten because they made my therapist rewrite the letter, and then they told me that I forced my therapist to rewrite the letter to go in my favor. We're, this we, has we nothing to do with the service <laughs> animal. I can, this I, has to do I, with I the chickens. I have nothing else to share, I guess, because this is. I mean, that, that's, that's the box we're in. We don't write the regulations. The commissioners, the commissioners approve and adopt the regulations that we as a board are here to uphold. And the notice of violation is with the chickens, okay? The support animal, that's a, that's a whole nother, that, that's a whole nother um, uh, issue. But what we're here is the chickens, that are on a lot less than 20,000 square feet. And it was testified to that the lot's about 40, uh, 14,000. So that's what we're here, that's what we're here to, that's what we're here to uh, act on today. Then I believe I shared everything I guess I can that has anything to do with this paper. Okay, did, uh, Mr. Jordan, do you have any further testimony? No, sir. Okay, board members, any questions of Mr. Jordan's testimony? 
Did, did I see a hand go up back there? I'd... No, okay. No one else has any questions on Mr. Jordan's testimony. I see he was wiping his brow. Sorry, I, I saw peripherally a, a hand flash up. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jordan. Do you, do you have any uh, witnesses that you would like to call or anyone that would like to provide testimony? Does anyone, does anyone have, uh, want to provide their own testimony today? See, there's a couple people back there that took the oath. At this point, this is the time to do that before we close testimony. So if you have anything to say, please make your way to the microphone. Can I sit down? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. My name's Robert Mace, uh, 6506 Church Street. I'm a retired school teacher, Baltimore County Public Schools, MACE. I, I would um, just like to say, well, if you guys can hear me or not. We live about a block, maybe a block and a half um, from uh, the days. And I record, I heard that rooster almost every morning. And I'd be in my house brushing my teeth and I could hear the rooster crow. So I know that it had to be a problem for the people that lived around the house because uh, it made a lot of noise. And I, I go for a walk uh, every morning. I try to do two miles. And I walk from my house down to the fire department on, uh, 30, was it 32? 32, and you could hear the rooster crowing all over the place. So it does make a lot of noise. And uh, it just was upsetting to me. One, one, one time I was out in the back of my house reading a book one afternoon and I could hear the thing crowing. So it was loud. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Mace's testimony? Okay, thank you, Mr. Mace. Does anyone else want to provide testimony? I am Sarah Mace. I own apartments. Are you, are you married to him? Yes. Okay. And I have so a could, could you give your address though? I oh, was just 6506 digging. Church Street. Okay. I own apartments across Trayer Avenue. The chickens have been running loose, or were running loose, in the apartments. The noise from the rooster is unbearable. My tenants were complaining. It's loud. <laughs> Like, I, like he said, we live a block and a half away and very noisy. Thank you. And any questions of Mrs. Mace's testimony? I, I just have one. Um, Ms. Mace, uh, first of all, I just want to thank you for coming. Do you have any documents to provide to the board? Yes. Thank you. Mrs. Mace, do you want to explain the documents that we're going to enter into evidence? Uh, one is a petition, and there are two affidavits from tenants that couldn't be here. Okay. We will accept those into evidence. Thank you. Name, address, occupation, and spell for the record your last name. Thomas Jeffrey Hounshell, 915 Trayer Avenue, apartment 12. And spell for the record your last name. H-O-U-N-S-H-E-L-L. -L. Very good. You, you, can, you can begin. Yes, I live directly across from the uh, the residence of Mrs. Jordan and uh, the rooster. I hadn't heard it in a day or two, but before then, the rooster was always crowing all during the day and all during the, the morning, and it was very annoying. 
That's all I have to say. Any questions of Mr. Hanshell's testimony? Okay. Thank you. What's your name? Hanshell. How do you spell that? H O U N S H E L L? Yes. S H E L L. And what's your first name? Thomas. Thomas. Okay, looks like we've exhausted all the people in the audience. We're going to take about a five minute break before we have our summation comments. <laughs>
we call the BZA back to order. Um, anyone else have any testimony before we close testimony? Okay, very good. Presentation of testimony of evidence is now closed and summations are in order. Mr. Allman, are you prepared to begin your summation comments? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, and let me interrupt. And uh, the, the Jordans, either one of you can go ahead and give your summation comments then after Mr. Allman gives his, okay? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the board. Um, I just want to be clear on what the issue is here today before you and what you are deciding. The issue is a violation of uh, Section 158.074 uh, of the Zoning Code. Um, this, um, that 158.074 is in regards to the R10,000 district which does not permit um, ag uses on lots less than 20,000 square feet. Um, that is clearly stated in the code. It is also cl clearly stated in the code that agricultural use in the zoning definitions includes poultry husbandry. In testimony before you today, from both the county and the Jordans, testimony has made clear that there is poultry and husbandry on the property, that there are s multiple chickens, um, that there is a new hen on the property. No, um, and in regarding the uh, rooster causing the nuisance, there, in evidence, there is a letter addressed to the Jordans from the Humane Society regarding the noise and the nuisance that it was causing the neighbors. In evidence, you have heard testimony from the neighbors here today about the annoyance the, uh, and the nuisance that the rooster caused. Now, I understand that um, in between the violation and this hearing, the rooster has um, allegedly been rehomed. No evidence has been submitted um, to back that fact up. As such, that um, no evidence was um, submitted to this board, I would request that um, in your ruling, you also rule that uh, roosters count as poultry, husbandry, and are not permitted on this property. This is a very simple case. Husbandry poultry are not permitted on lots less than 20,000 square feet. It has been testified to that this lot is only 11,000 square feet. As such, poultry, husbandry, some chickens, hens, or any variation of are not permitted on the property. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Allman. Mr. and Mrs. Jordan, want to give any summation comments? You can, you can go to either microphone, whichever you want. It doesn't matter. Jessica Jordan, J-O-R-D-A-N, 6516 Freedom Avenue. Photographer, Ricky Master Practitioner. Um, I understand the codes. I understand that there is chickens. That I can't be. understand what you said. Could you a little bit closer to the microphone? It's also taller than me. Um, I understand the codes and the, there are chickens on the property. I also just, thank you. Um, I did not realize I need to print out a picture. I do have the pictures. Like I said, that Elvis is rehomed, but I didn't realize I need to print that portion out, but I do have that on me. Um, but I would ask to find it maybe in your hearts to make this a special case, because it does involve an ESA, that the rooster is rehomed, the rooster is not coming back, and a complete understanding and agreeance of that. But I would like to keep my hands, um, just to continue to help me and to help my emotional support animal be able to s still see a happy chicken as well. It is a special case. I do like it is a special case. I would just like it to be looked at like that. That the, there is no nuisance around anymore. That the hens are not noisy, and never once were the hens an issue for any of our neighbors. I just ask that it, the the case just be looked at as a special case in my standing. That's all. Thank you. 
The hearing and record of this case is now closed and in accordance with the Open Meetings Act of Maryland, the board will now consider the case. Board members. I'll go first. I, I, these are never fun. They just aren't fun. Um, we're, as a Board of Zoning Appeals, in this case, 6326, we're to look at whether the zoning administration's administrator's notice of violation is appropriate. Well, we've got the code. The code is clear as can be. The family doesn't meet the code. He cited them for that. Am I to say Mr. Boyd is in acting inappropriately? No, he's doing his job that he was hired to do by the county commissioners. And the unfortunate thing is not everybody ends up happy when he does his job. I, I think that's probably an accurate statement. And, and I think that's true of his uh, assistants as they go about their business. It seems to me the statement of fact is the board must determine whether to uphold the zoning administrator's notice of violation. I don't see any way that I cannot uphold his action. I think it was clear that he did it as, as humanely as possible, but uh, that leaves people upset and unhappy. The choice is to live elsewhere where you've got 20,000 square feet. Uh, sorry, but I, I don't see any other solution. Mr. Colwell. Um, I agree that the, uh, the county has uh, clearly stated the, the code, the violation is clear. Um, I would like to s suggest that the um, because of some confusion on the part of the um, the, um, the Jordans that the waive the uh, the fees the fines associated with this, which at this point comes close to like seven thousand dollars or a little over that if it's enforced. Yeah, we have no issue with waiving any fines. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Hector. I really have nothing further to add. I think it's a clear violation, and I think that Mr. Boyd acted appropriately. Mr. Snyder. I also agree. I believe it's a clear violation. I thought the county uh, tried to accommodate um, and were very prudent in their enforcement of this, and I believe the code is, in this case, the code, and it obviously is impacting the neighborhood, and we should um, we should uh, deny the appeal. Okay, board members, I'll entertain a motion. The move we deny the appeal. Is that how we typically say? In case number six three two six. Yes. I'd like to amend that if we can. Um, and amend the uh, motion to uh, deny the appeal and also waive the uh, the fines associated with with the uh, violation. Okay. Second. Okay. So we've accepted that. Do we have a second, Mr. Simmons? I, I need clarification. What do you mean when you say deny the appeal? Well, Is that what you just said? Yes. The, this was an appeal of a zoning administrator's notice of violation. So this is support the appeal. No, no. Support the administration. The Jordans are appealing the I, zoning I'm, administrator. I'm sorry, I get mixed up. Forgive me. Okay, and then along with the and I then to to uh, support you the the way the fine. Yes, that's your addition. I think there was also 
a request that we specifically state that roosters are considered to be poultry as well. Do we no, need that's redundant. redundant? That's okay. redundant. Okay. I, I think it is redundant. Yes. Poultry is poultry, male or female, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm good with that. Okay, so, so the motion. Uh, do you want me to make a motion then? It, it, the, the motion is to um, deny the appeal of the zoning administrator's notice of violation uh, and to um, waive, the fine. Waive, the, waive the fines associated with the violation. Okay, do we have a second on that motion? I second it. Okay, Mr. Mr. Col uh, yeah, you, yeah, you can do that. Mr. Caldwell seconded the motion. Okay, any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries five to zero. Our oral decision will become final upon a written decision which will be issued within 30 days unless otherwise extended by this board. The board's decision may be appealed by filing a petition for judicial review with the clerk of the circuit court for Carroll County in accordance with the provisions of chapter 200, title seven of the Maryland Rules of Procedure. The appeal must be filed within 30 days of the date of the board's written decision. Thank you very much, and this hearing is adjourned.